Fine. So uh, this is another day uh, which uh, we are working on working capital management, uh, financial management intermediate level. So today we are going to look at the working capital management, which examiner want us to understand. If you look at our syllabus, the examiner want us to understand the introduction, introduction and concept of our working capital. Another one, uh, the subtopic is the working capital and to, um, working capital management. Then they also need us to look at the factors influencing the working capital of a firm, the factors influencing the working capital of a firm, and the types of working capital, the types of working capital, and the objectives of working capital. And finally, the Islamic finance. And finally, the Islamic finance. Uh, not the Islamic, so that is for another unit. So the last one is the importance and objective of working capital. So this topic has been, uh, if you look at it, it is not wide, but we don't know what we examine at it. We just uh, we have to cover uh, what is required. So we can start by uh, starting giving the definition of the management of working capital, definition, definition, Definition of uh definition of working capital management and to say is the management of a farm asset it is the management of a farm asset it is the management of a farm asset the management of a farm asset which is the management of a farm asset that is the land current asset. That is the non current asset. That is the non current asset and current asset and current asset in order to maintain the stability of the farm operation. In order to maintain the stability of the farm operation, to put a full stop and say, the current asset constitute, the current asset constitute, the current asset constitute. The current assets constitute number one inventory, inventory number two receivables, 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 and number three, and number three we have cash and cash and cash. So if you have done to the financial reporting, you know this one falls under the balance sheet of the uh, current current asset. Then you put uh we continue and say put a full stop and say. Cash, which may be short-term investment, cash, which may be a short-term investment, which may be a short-term investment of the farm working capital, of the farm working capital, of the farm working capital. Then we have factor, we have factors, factors affecting, factors affecting a working capital management, factors affecting the working capital management. So the first factor is the size of the business. The first factor is the size of the of the business, the size of the business. So the bigger the business, the bigger the working capital. So you explain and say, a financial fund requires large amount of money. A financial fund requires large amount of money uh, to be invested, to be invested be invested in working cap, in working capital, in working capital. Number two factor is the business fluctuation. Business a fluctuation. If the business is making loss, tomorrow it's making profit, then you don't uh it is very difficult to determine the working cap, the working capital. So it's saying a seasonal fluctuation, seasonal fluctuation, seasonal fluctuation. We bring both a negative and positive impact. We bring a negative and positive impact. A positive impact is the result, the same as the results. We bring negative uh, or a negative and positive impact on working capital investment. And then uh, the, the third uh, factor is the production policy. Is the production, a production policy. Production production policy. Then you say a steady a production policy, a steady production policy, a steady production policy, a steady production policy 
will cause inventory to accumulate, will cause inventory to accumulate, or will cause inventory to accommodate, sorry, will cause the inventory to accommodate the movement of commodity, the movement of commodity uh, to the potential customer, to the potential customer and vice versa, to the potential customer and vice versa. So if you have accommodative policy, then you will not, you will not need uh, to have more of the inventory. Because the more you have more of inventory, then the more of a uh, uh, business fluctuation of in terms of the capital, capital. Then we have the farm credit policy. Another factor, another factor, number four, is the farm, the farm uh, credit, the credit policy, the farm credit policy. Policy. So, how is the farm credit policy affect the working capital? How is the farm credit policy affect the working capital? So, you say the farm credit policy will affect the level of investment. The farm credit policy will affect the level of investment in great receivable, in great receivable, in great receivable, in great receivable, if not well controlled, if not well controlled. Remember, the more we have, the more we have inventory, the more we don't have, the more it's like uh, we have cash outflow. The, the company is running out of capital to finance its uh it by its its operation. The reason is the customer still hold our cash. The customer still hold our cash. So you must have a good uh, credit control policy, credit control policy. So those are the few factors which affect the the, the farm working capital, the farm working capital. Then we have the approaches to working capital policy. We have approaches, approaches to working capital policy. We have approaches, working capital policy. Have approaches, working, working capital policy. Have approaches to working capital policy. The first approach is conservative approach. We have conservative approach. Conservative approach. Conservative approach. And then you can explain this conservative approach and say, under this policy, under this policy, management of a working capital relies under this policy. Management of a working capital relies on long-term fund, relies on long-term funds for financial needs, relies on long-term a fund for financial needs of a farm, financial needs of a farm. Say that is the farm uses the long-term uh, funds, the farm uses the long-term funds in order to manage its operation, in order to manage its operation order to manage each operation. Then the second approach, the second approach we have, this was the first approach, the second approach we have aging, age, stock moderate, stock moderate, stock moderate approach, stock moderate approach. The same, under this policy, the short-term funds under this policy, the short-term funds are used to finance the business activities. Under this policy, the short-term funds are used to finance the business activities. And then uh, the third one, we have aggressive, we have aggressive, aggressive approach. We have aggressive approach. We have aggressive approach. And then you say, under this policy, the short-term funds are combined to the long-term funds, are combined to the long-term funds, the short-term funds, and they should have said under this policy, short-term funds are combined to the long-term funds, are combined to the long-term funds in order to finance, in order to finance the permanent financial activities, the permanent financial activities that the firm, that are firm requires in its operation that the farm requires in its operation. So so you can put some uh here so that you can remind yourself this one is for long term for long term fund 
this one is for long term fund, this one is for short term, short term fund, spent or capital, and then this one is confined, this one is confined for what? What short and long term, what short and long term, what short and and long term, what short and long term. Then now we have, uh, so those are the concepts, those are the concepts of, uh, those are the approaches of working capital management, approaches of the working capital management. So let's look at now these types of working capital management. Remember these types of working capital management, we have receivables, inventory, and cash. We have inventory and cash. So we can start with the, Let's start with the account receivables. Let's start with the account receivables. Let's start with the account receivables. Then you say receivables are management. We can start with receivables management. No receivables management. These are the data of the of the company. These are the data of the company. So you say investment is receivable. Investment is receivable is influenced by the level is influenced by the level of credit sales is influenced by the level of credit sales and receivable period and receivable period. So there is other companies or the organization when they sell goods on credit say it is due in 60 days. So if the sales is, if the payment is due in 60 days, it means that that company is giving you a credit for two months. If it is due in 30 days, if it is due in 30 days, it means you will pay within a one month. So those are the credit terms. Those are credit terms so which you are going to consider. So you can say, you can add another point so how do we get now this receivables, receivable management? So to get receivables, to get receivables, we take what? We take the account, we take that is, a, a, that is average credit sales, average credit sales times this, the receivable period, times the receivable period, we divide, we divide by 365, we divide by 365, we divide by 365. Then you can add another point and say the management can influence the farm level of receivable. The management can influence the farm uh, level of receivable through the change, through the change, through the change in the annual credit sales, through the change in the annual credit sales, and the receivable period and receivable period and receivable period to put a point and say. This change is enhanced. This change is enhanced by a change in the farm credit policy. This change is enhanced by the a change in the, the farm credit policy. If they change the credit policy, then they are then they are they are management of this receivable will what will change. So we have this credit policy. So let's have this credit policy. So just write credit policies. Uh, credit policies. So we can list them and explain. So the first credit policy is the credit standard. First one is credit standard. Credit standards. Credit standards. And then to explain and say, these are conditions put in place. These are conditions put in place to be met before a credit policy is over. These are conditions put in place to be met before the credit uh, the credit policy is offered to a customer. It's offered to a customer. Then another point and say when the standards are so uh, strict, when the standards are so strict, comma, the annual uh, sales receivable, the annual uh, sales receivable will be lower, will be lower, so will be lower 
Then uh, we have another credit policy. Credit policy, we have credit term, credit term, credit term. So this is what I was talking about, due on net 30 days, due on 60 days, and 90 days, and 90 days. So you say, it refers to the credit period, it refers to the credit period over to the firm customer, it refers to the credit period over to the, uh, to the firm customer, and cash discount, and cash discount, if any, and cash discount, if any. You say EG, EG, credit terms of EG, 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 credit term of two net, uh, two over three, two over three net 30 days, two over three net 30, 30 days. So what does this mean when we say two over three net 30 days? So if you pay, if you pay, uh, if you pay within what? So if you pay in three days or if you pay within three days of this one, you get a discount of what? You get a discount of 2%, get a, a discount of 2%. Or if you have another one and say two over fifteen net net thirty days two over fifteen net thirty days. If you pay within fifteen days, if you pay within fifteen days of net thirty days, then you get a discount of get a discount of two percent. Get a discount of two percent. So you explain and say it means that it means that it means that. A customer who pay within, uh, you can choose the second one. The customer who pays within 15 days, the customer who pay within 15 days, enjoy a 2% discount, enjoy a 2% discount, while a remaining customer, where remaining customer, where remaining customer should pay within 30 days, when remaining customer should pay within 30 days. In 30 days. And then we have another credit policy that is protection effort. Do you have any enforcement which can uh, collect this debt, which can collect this debt? So you can say these are conditions put in place. These are conditions put in place and the procedures and the procedures to be followed and the procedures to be followed when dealing with the overdue accounts. These are procedures put in place when dealing with the overdue accounts, when dealing with the overdue accounts. So maybe you can use the phone calls to, to remind them, you can use the email, you can use the fiscal visitation, or you can uh, take any measure, you can take any measure, you can take any measure. So we will have an illustration for that. So I want to have the not all of the not for, for receivables and payable, then you can do one, can't have a one question, one combined question, so that we save on time. So that we save on time. So that we save on time. Now we can go to the management of the inventory. We just have the not pass. We can go to the management of the inventory. Management of inventory. Inventory management. So let's have inventory management. So inventory management, you say, uh, too much inventory is not uh, desirable. Too much inventory is not desirable uh, because it increases the holding cost. Because it increases the holding cost. Uh, when too much, too little inventory, when too little inventory is not, uh, when too little inventory is also not desirable, is also not desirable because it increases the ordering cost. It increases the ordering cost. It increases the ordering cost. 
Remember, we have the holding cost and the ordering cost. The holding cost is that cost associated with the what? The storage of uh, inventory, the storage of the inventory, also the security of the inventory, the insurance of the inventory. But when we add also the little uh, stock in our, in our warehouse, then we will incur more cost of importing, ordering this, uh, this good. So you must well maintain this inventory. So you put another code and say, the farm should therefore maintain an inventory. The farm should therefore, the farm should therefore uh, maintain an inventory level, maintain an inventory level that minimizes the cost, that minimizes the total cost, that minimizes the total cost. That is, that is holding cost and ordering cost. That is holding cost and ordering cost. Put also say this inventory, um, this inventory level, this inventory level is also known as EOQ. This inventory level is also known as EOQ. Then we have the motive of holding inventory. We have the motive, motive of holding inventory. Motive of holding inventory. So the first one, the first one we have a transaction motive, transaction motive, transaction motive. We have this uh, precautionary motive, precaution motive, or precautionary. Number three, we have what is called speculative, a speculative motive, speculative motive. So let's start with the transaction. Um, well, this one, but you don't need to explain to have learned on that. So we can explain what does it mean when we say a transaction motive and precautionary motive and speculative motive. So when you say a transaction motive, you should have a certain level of inventory to allow you to do a day-to-day -day sales over uh, or day-to-day -day movement of the inventory. So that if the customer can come, you can sell it today, you can sell it tomorrow and the other day. So that you can have the daily transaction of the inventory. A uh, precautionary motive, precautionary motive. This one we should all inventory in case there is any uh there is any of emerging uh, emerging issues. Then you can take that inventory. And then speculative. That this is speculative. You all this inventory to speculate or look at the market to look at the market. If the market change in price, you have that inventory. So if the market change in price, maybe the price goes up, then it is your high time to sell this speculative event inventory because you are holding this inventory as you wait for a good investment to invest in your inventory. That's what is uh, meant by uh, speculative inventory. So we can have uh, some the EOQ, we can have uh, this variable of EOQ can have this variable of EOQ. Remember you have done the EOQ uh, under the management accounting. And we say, how do we get the EOQ? We take two DCO, you divide by HC. So D is the annual demand. You see where, where D equals to annual demand, annual demand, annual demand. And CO equals to ordering cost, ordering cost. And HC equals to holding cost. Holding cost. HC equals to holding cost. You can start with ordering cost. You can start with ordering cost and say it depends on the number of orders. Depends on the number of orders are uh, made during the year. Depends on the number of orders made during the year. It also say given an annual demand. Given an annual demand. Given an annual demand. Of any of any time an order is placed, given an annual demand of any time an order is placed, to so say it is of quantity unit. So you just write say it is of it is of. Uh, you write Q that is what say unit of unit. Uh, comma number of orders number of orders number of orders. Number of orders, you say, at D, you divide by Q. That is number of orders. 
with the cost uh, with the cost per order with the cost per order the cost per order you write this with the cost per order so how do we get that holding cost so how uh, or that ordering cost the cost per order the cost per order so we take that ordering cost we take what p over what uh q times the ordering cost Cost. So that is the formula of getting the ordering cost. And then we have the stock holding cost. We have the stock holding cost, the stock holding cost, which we represent as HC. The stock holding cost, we say it depends on average stock balance. It depends on average stock balance maintained by the farm, maintained by the farm at any given point, at any given point, at any given point. Given the average stock of, given the average stock of, given the average stock of, uh, Q divided by two, that is average stock, and the cost of holding, and the cost of holding a unit of stock, at the cost of holding a unit of stock, uh, you write HC, the cost of holding unit of stock. So how do we get this uh, stock holding cost? So how do we get this stock holding cost? We take the uh, Q, we divide by two, the number of orders, we divide by two times the holding cost, and the holding cost per unit. This HC is the holding cost per unit. That HC is the holding cost per unit. So that is it all about the E of Q. So that is it all about the E of Q. That is it all about the E of Q. So we also have something called a uh, right issue, right issues of uh, but this one will come later. We will write this later, right issue. And we can have the management of uh, we have done with the receivable. So let's go to the cash. Let's go to the cash. Management of cash. We just write management of cash. Management of cash. Water here. So just write management of cash. Let we explain and say cash is the most function of the uh, is the most functional or is the most fund used by the company. Cash is the most fund used by the company uh, during the operation or to finance operating activities. Or you can say cash is the most fund used by the by the farm to finance its operation. Cash is the most funds used by the uh, company to finance its operation. Finance, finance its operation. Then we can have the motive of holding cash. The motive of holding cash can have the motive, the motive of holding gas. Number one, also we have the uh, transaction motive. Transaction motive. Then number two, we can have the precautionary. Then number three, have the speculative. Let's explain the transaction motive. Let's explain the transaction motive and say the farm needs to hold sufficient cash. The farm, the farm needs to hold sufficient cash so that it can be able to meet its a daily transaction, so that it can uh, so that. It can be able to meet its daily transactions, its daily transaction, 
that involve that involve receiving and payment of cash that involve receiving and payment of cash that involve receiving and payment of cash then you can have the precautionary can have the precautionary and say the firm needs to hold sufficient cash the firm needs to hold sufficient cash so has to be able so has to be able to meet any emergencies so has to be able to meet any emergencies or unusual demand or unusual demand or unusual demand. Then we have the speculative, we have the speculative say the farm may need to hold cash, the farm may need to hold cash to ask to make any advantages, to ask to make any advantage of any short-term profitable investment. So ask to make any advantage or what? Any short-term a profitable investment, initial term profitable investment, initial term profitable investment, initial term profitable investment. So we write a topic there called opportunity cost in cash management. Opportunity cost, opportunity, opportunity cost in cash management, opportunity cost in cash management. Opportunity cost in cash management. Opportunity cost in cash management. We explain and say opportunity cost under cash management is investment. Opportunity cost under cash uh, opportunity cost under cash management is the investment return for gone. Is the investment return for gone? The investment return for gone. We put a comma and say when the farm hold cash. When the farm hold cash instead of investing, instead of investing in some project, when the farm hold cash instead of investing in some project, instead of investing in some project, then to put a person, the following process include the following uh, process include the following features. When we have the uh, the features of that process, that is the opportunity cost. So we can have the feature can have the feature. Number one to say transaction cost of raising additional fund, transaction cost, transaction cost of raising additional fund. Number two, we have the interest charge. Number two, we have the interest charge, the interest charge. Number three, we have loss of cash discount, loss of cash discount, loss of cash discount. Number four, Loss of credit control, 